right. Thank you for staying with us. So the Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission is set to hold a stakeholders forum on Thursday following the repeated cases of national power grid collapse in the country. The commission said the public hearing was in line with section 48, subsection 1 of the Electricity Act 2023 as amended. According to a statement by its social media handles, NERC stated that the hearing would be held to discuss the recent escalating incidents of grid disturbances, often leading to marked outages in several states. The Commission stated that this has reversed many of the gains recently achieved in reducing infrastructure deficit and improving grid stability. Joining us for this conversation is the MD CEO of the Association of Nigerian Electricity <coughs> Distributors and official spokesman for all distribution companies, Sandy Odunto. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank Good morning. you for joining us. Good morning. Thank you very much. If you look at the papers this morning, some of the papers, uh, you see the story of the matter of a grid collapse. And uh, one that particularly caught my attention is that on the front page of this Nigerian newspaper saying, grid collapse, sad story of greed and grief. System failed 99 times under Buhari, eight times in the current administration. And uh, I'm wondering if you could just speak to this matter of greed and grief. Is that what it is? Well, um, <coughs> before we jump to any conclusion on these issues, it's always good for us to consider where we are now, where we are coming from, and what the situation has been over the years. The issue of the national grid problem started more than 50 years ago. It's not something that happened right from the time of the military. Um, as you plan for electricity, one of the things that you have to consider <coughs> is the population of the country. Mm. So you have to build your electricity provision in accordance with the growing population. And I'll give one example. <coughs> Between 1989 and 1999, Nigeria had four leaders, four presidents. Beginning from President Ibrahim Babangida after 1989, followed by Shivenes Shuneko, followed by General Sonia Bacha, and then followed by General Absalam Abubakar. Those were four leaders yeah. within a 10 year period. <clears throat> In that 10 year period, Nigerian population grew, but within, those, uh, within that 10 year period, not a single power plant was built in Nigeria. What you failed to do in 1989 will catch up with you by 2019 or 2029. Mm. So our failure as a nation started a long time ago. Yes, I'm aware that in the last 10 years there has been 105 uh, grid collapse. The grid had collapsed 105 times in 10 years. That's true. Um, even the one that happened two days ago, speak to the nature of our national grid, which, um, as this goes, we've been talking about this since 2015. Mm. And the point we've been making is the fact that the transition uh, company of Nigeria, TCN, which is 100% owned by the government, mm. needs to renew their infrastructure, replace a lot of things. And quite sincerely, the MDT, uh, MDC of TCN came out a few days ago to say, indeed, their uh, equipment are out of date. Mm. When somebody says the equipment are out of date, you cannot even blame him as a person. He took off his only one a few years ago. Mm. So it is as a result of those failures over the years that we have yes that we have what we have today mm -hmm. that is not to say that we cannot apportion blame but instead of looking at blame i think we should begin to look at solution and that's why i think our regulator NEC, has taken the right step now so that we can halt this uh, very because it is certain that the collapse will continue unless something is done and one of the things that they have done, which I think is commendable, 
is that they looked at, there are three departments, main departments in TCN. <clears throat> and they looked at it. We have uh, TSP, which is Transmission Service Provider. Those are the ones that maintain the cables and the towers. All right. We have the MO, which is the one that handles market rules, financial issues, market operator, as they are called. But the very important one is called System Operator. The System Operator is the, is the department that maintains and stabilizes the grid. We've been saying this for a long time. They need to unbundle TCN. They need to take out that system operator away from that TCN. And that's exactly what they are doing. I'm aware of a meeting today. There's a public hearing coming on up Thursday. on, on Thursday. Thursday. This thing is aimed at creating the Nigerian independent system operator. Once we have something like that, we are going towards a path that will lead us to having a better uh, national grid. However, yes. I, I said this in another forum that if you have a child that you cannot train properly, you cannot feed that child properly, you cannot even control your child, the child is just not doing well under you as a parent, give up that child for adoption. Are you Let somebody else... It, call it any name. It's either you privatize, or if you say, okay, for security reasons, we cannot or we don't want to privatize, okay. then concession. Mm -hmm. There are things you can do to enable the private sector, to enable uh, foreign um, investors come in. And when people talk about foreign direct investment, part of the problem that we have is that no foreigner will come and invest in any country unless at least three things happen. Number one, we must all as a nation respect the sanctity of contract. That's number one. Number two, we must provide the enabling environment for such uh, businessmen to thrive. to thrive. Number three, and that's a link to the first and the second, uh, every businessman that invests in any business wants to be able to recover their costs. So if you cannot recoup your investment, you will not have that, you will not be interested in investing anywhere and in anything. So those are the things that we need to do. And I think they've started taking that step and it is a step in the right direction. And I'm sure that if they can follow it through and do the right thing and ensure that we are transparent in what we do, mm. we'll get the right result. So that is what I see as uh, there's a need for huge investment, huge. Yeah. And it's not something that is and, small. Yeah. And they've done some investment in the last few years. That's and a, people I'm are talking to that and people are talking about the great collapse under Buhari, blah, blah, blah. Which was the same under the same Buhari government that the semen uh, deal Agreement, yes. came on board and a lot of things were done. It is just that what had been done... So it could have been worse if and that didn't come It would have been worse, yes. And that also continued under the current administration. Mm. But in Nigeria, we tend, especially the media, we tend to focus more on negativity. I'm sorry. While we are talking about what is negative, we should also give it to them where they have done something mm. right. I only just mentioned our regulator now. Mm. If you ask me, it's not as if I will tell you that they are 100%. Uh, they do things the way we want it, 100%. But where they do something commendable, let us commend them. Mm. That's where I look at it as a person. Mm. Balance is very important. Yes. Absolutely. Um, so one wonders, of the investment that you have rightly pointed out, successive governments have invested a lot of monies into the electricity and the power sector and all of it, because Nigerians are asking questions. So where did all these monies go? Uh, if we are still saying, talking about infrastructure deficit and all of it, where we cannot get um, effective and optimal service to customers at the end of the day. Where did all these monies go? When the, the sector was also privatized, we thought that, oh, all this matter of uh, great collapse and all of it, yes, we know that TCN is being handled by government, but a lot of Nigerians needed to know, feel that or felt that this whole matter would be a thing of the past. But you have mentioned something, transparency and doing the right thing. Is that also part of why we have found ourselves here, that perhaps the processes were not transparent enough and that uh, we may not have been doing the right things? I don't think the problem is to do with the fact that the processes were not transparent. I think the processes failed from day one because of the way we handle our thing in the country. 
I only just mentioned the issue of sanctions of contract. Because when you sign a contract, that you do this, if you do this, I will do this. Mm. And then the private person Comes came in, in and then he did what he is expected to do. And you, as government, fail to do what you are supposed to do. That's the beginning of failure. Mm. Okay? And when you do a business anywhere, and there, there, there are no incentives, or the way we, we do our thing, generally as a country, I think a lot of things are wrong in Nigeria. And instead of just apportioning blame or you looking for someone to blame, because if you talk about the money that has been spent in the power sector, they even say, beginning from when we started civil administration, then you may have to call all the presidents to sit down and tell us what they have done and what they failed to do mm. and why they did it and who did what, mm -hmm. including the dead. Accountability. You cannot call the dead. Those who are still alive, mm. you need to sit them down and let each of them tell us and you begin to see that even when the government or the leader tries to do the right thing, what happens with the followers? Even when the followers try to do the right thing, what happened to we, Nigerians, the receivers, the end users, the customers? Because people are talking about the power sector. It is not a magical thing. The truth of the matter is that if I give you power and you keep on stealing the same power, then that means I cannot recover my cost. If I cannot recover my cost, that means I will begin to cut corner. Again, there are a lot of things that people will not admit, but the truth of the matter is that the, you, cannot, you cannot have any business where you cannot recover the cost. There's a landing cost for every item, just like bread. Even a woman that fry a car, there, is a, there are associated costs. Mm -hmm. There is what we call cost of production Absolutely. to the frying of the akara. Mm -hmm. If you go to Pamalakara and you keep stealing a car, that woman will not be able to fry a car tomorrow because all the money she needs to get back in order to go and buy the ingredient you have stolen. We do that a lot. We're a country that believes so much in theft. And people say, ah, don't say that. Nigeria is holy. We go to church, we go to mosque. The truth is that it's not just... When we even talk about government, I'm sorry, who, who, what is government? Who are government? Who are the people in government? Where are they from? They are not from heaven. They are not from Mars. There are people from within our society. Right. And unfortunately for us as a people again, when we elect people, we are the same people that give them a lot of pressure. We expect them to do a lot of things. Your wife is pregnant and you go to see your senator. What is the business of a senator with the pregnancy of your wife? And that, that senator will now begin to find a way to, to make money from doing some very funny oversight function to very funny hearing to very funny cutting corner somewhere. Mm. That is what we do as a people. So it is us, all of us. I don't know what the National Orientation Agency is doing, but I think there's a need for a total reorientation of Nigeria, for all of us to see that the progress of this nation is in our hand. All of us can work together and ensure that there's progress. People blame others. The same person that blames somebody else, go and check what he does. You begin to see some things and you wonder. In, in, in our own case, a major problem today in the Nigerian power sector is energy theft. Mm. And we have caught both the rich and the poor. In Ikejajiyari, Lagos State, Ikejajiyari, we caught a man who has a Bentley stealing 68,000 naira energy some years ago. If you have a Bentley that is more than 150 million naira, that costs more than 150 million naira to buy, and you are stealing electricity, bypassing your meter to the tune of 68,000 naira, that's the poverty of the mind. Mm. And the same thing you find even with the poor. So it's, a, it's, a, it's either you try, we live within our means, we try to do what is right, we need to know that everything we do has an impact on other users. That is the way to go. But every time we sit down, oh, government, oh, go the same government. Who are, we are the government, all of us. Mm. Because we have a hand in everything that happens in government. When they do something wrong, somebody will say, this is wrong. You see the supporters of people in government say, no, you don't like them, and vice versa. Mm. So that's what I think is wrong with us.
Mm. So we've spoken okay. to a lot of issues, you know, beyond even power affecting other sectors. If you look at the front pages of the newspapers this morning, you will see that there are a whole lot of issues bordering on, uh, you know, um, uh, citizenship and all that that we also, you know, mentioned earlier. But it's so sad that we're talking about this at this time. I remember at uh, the time of uh, NEPA, it seemed as if we were going to experience a drastic shift when we were moving to uh, the PHCN. But let's talk about how this is really affecting you as an association in terms of, you know, uh, customer satisfaction and also maintaining the business. Okay, thank you. First of all, let us work with figures and facts. Um, as far back as September 2015, I've been featuring in different programs within TVC alone and so many other media uh, organizations. Um, if you look at the state of the city today, we are better today than we were in 2014. We came in on the 1st of November 2013. That was when the privatization happened. And in spite of all the flaws that may be associated with the privatization, we have made tremendous progress over the years. We are not where we are supposed to be, but we have a long way to go. And but where we are today is a lot different from where we were, right? But a lot of things are still waiting to be done. Until we do those things, we cannot achieve certain things. An example is the recent outcry on the issue of Band A. Band A should be a thing of joy to all of us. Why? Band A simply means we are inching towards providing 24-hour electricity. Okay. If you are in Bande, we have what we call service-based tariff. And thanks to the regulator for that kind of uh, initiative. That is, I will give you a tariff that is based on the service I'm able to provide for you. Now, if you are in Band A today, you are paying the true cost of electricity. If you are in Band B, Band C, Band D, or Band E, Government is paying 67% of your bill. That is 67% subsidy. Mm. Now, that subsidy, people, it is so easy to talk about subsidy. People forget that even when you say subsidy, it leads to a lot of shortfall. Why? Because government is also broke. Government is not able to. They want to pay. They have not been paid. And that money is just there unpaid. And when you don't pay, then you see debt in the value chain. Generation companies have to pay gas suppliers. Transmission company, which is the transporter of electricity that we are blaming today for system collapse. They, they are the transporter. They need to be paid for the services. They need to buy equipment. Then distribution company that we blame, that we abuse all the time because we are the one that the end users know. <laughs> we also need to pay for services. We need to maintain our equipment. Now, once we don't get enough, to pay back to the market. You get energy worth of 10 billion naira. You are only able to collect 4 billion. Mm. Or you are so good, you know, if you are very good, maybe you, are, you manage to collect 60, 60% uh, which is 6 billion. But the fact is that that remaining 4 billion which is unpaid or stolen completely, that one alone means that you cannot pay back the person that gave you the energy. That person will not want to give you energy again. So it is a very... Uh, everything that happens to any of the uh, segments, the layers in the value chain, affect, affect the other. Mm. So that's why I call, I call us siblings. Generation companies, transmission companies, and distribution companies. We are siblings because now that the, once the system collapses, I start getting scared of how do I provide service to my band A, band B, band C customers. Because once I don't give you the threshold, the average within a 30-day period, minimum of 20 to 24 hours, then I'm in trouble. And my regulator doesn't want to listen to any of that. I'll be heavily fined mm. for not meeting up with that. Those are the kind of things that we ought to look at. So it's a question of, like I said, doing the right thing. Mm. And doing the right thing means even the president needs to listen. The president needs to know who to talk to. 
which the president needs to, because the box stops at the table of the president. When you hold on to transmission company as your company, so it is still NEPA, right? So that one, people need to follow the money, track the money, ask questions, get and ensure that the right thing is done. And when you see a uh, newspaper banding figures, mm. I don't blame them. Because if they see the amount of money that has been spent in a particular place, mm. they want to know what is the outcome of the money spent. It's not enough to just release money. We need to call people to account. We need to let people tell us what they are doing with the money. And that was the question and, we asked and, earlier. Yes, but like I said, when you talk about that, um, there are a lot of things that you have to look at. When you are talking about government agency, call government people to come and talk to you. They are the ones that have access to their own books. They, are, they know things that we don't know. And we cannot sit down somewhere and we start abusing them or blaming them without having the fact and the figure. Mm -hmm. That's why I say... In but we gaming, expect that as siblings, there might be some things that you know. Oh, there are some things that your senior brother and sister will do <laughs> that you don't know about, even though you are siblings. You live in the same house. Your senior sister will sneak out of the house in the night and come back two hours later. Somebody will still open the door for her. No, you are asleep. <laughs> she can even jump the fence. That used to happen in the service. There are no phones. Somebody will open the door for her and allow her in. But I'm interested in the aspect of the president listening. Yes. What do you want the president to perhaps do or listen to? We know, yes, there's going to be a hearing on Thursday. You also touch on that, what, how holistic the approach should be and what you're expecting that that hearing should be. But on the part of the president, because you say the box stops at its table, what do you think he should be looking at at this point? Well, the difference between Nigerian president and the Western nation president, I said Western, I'm not talking about African president. <laughs> And I'm more concerned about Nigeria because Nigeria is my country. I don't want to talk about Togo or uh, Cameroon. The difference between Nigerian president and the other Western country presidents is that once you become president in Nigeria, you are caged. By whom? By the system. You are caged. Access to the president, only the high and the mighty, or his friends or families, or people he is associates or his boys have access to him. In England, go to Downing Street, write a letter that you want to see the Prime Minister. At some point, you will get to see the Prime Minister. Mm. At some point. They will ask you questions, the thing that they will do, but you will see the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. I lived there for 32 years. In the case of Nigeria, the President is an almighty while, he's while he reigns. And even when a President is working, you see some guys, they'll be padding him like this. Mm. They show him where to go. And I witnessed that even during Baba Basu job. I was there live. Don't you think it's for security reasons? I was, it's not just for security reasons. We have a system that shields our leader from the truth. Mm. In the days of the military, and I went back there with Mohammed and some other military governments, uh, governors or uh, military head of state, you see a leader sneaking out of his comfort zone in the middle of the night in a private car to go to an hospital for instance mm. to see what is going on or send somebody trusted to go and check certain things. When you do that as a leader, you get to see and feel the pulse of the people. You get to see and know what is going on. Mm. In most cases, our leaders don't seem to know what is going on. Coming to the power sector, it's not enough, Mr. President, for you to be getting briefings from people within your government. You also need to step out of the box, ask questions from people who are not related, who are not in government, who are not your appointees, so that you get the other side of the story and perhaps be able to do a kind of comparative analysis. Unless and until we do that, what you find is that the leader of the nation only gets to act on what he is told. Mm. Because he, because he gets, trusts those hands to give him the right information. He, he cannot be in all places at the same time. But there's no way you can. Even when you write to the president, mm. the letter may never get to the president. That's the truth. Even to the gov I'm talking about the president. The governors are more of even law of the manner. Those ones are even more terrible in this country. Mm. Out of these governors, I know half of them are not easily accessible. That's the truth. Mm. If governors cannot even see ordinary citizens, then you are talking about Mr. President. And then the officials 
give them the briefing. They tell them. It's what they tell them that your guy will act on. Because he cannot be everywhere by himself. Absolutely. And he trusts that they will give him the right information. They don't give that, if, they give, if they give them the right information, Nigeria will have made a lot of progress in the last 20 years of democracy. All right. So that's why I now linked it to uh, the hearing for Thursday. What, what, are your, what are you looking forward to, and how holistic can that be approached? Well, when we do public hearing, the, um, that is done in accordance with the law to fulfill the tenets, the provision of the law. Mm. For us, as discourse, what we always say is that as soon as you do such thing, laudable as it is, implementation matters. It's not enough to listen to the people and they have your own predetermined mm. intention. I'm not saying that's what NEC will do. I'm just saying that, yes, it is a, it's a step in the right direction. It's a good thing that they, they've come to the point that they say, you know what, we need to have a Nigerian independent system operator. People that are going to be chosen should be chosen on merit. We should put round peg in round holes so that they will get there and begin this enormous that. The good thing about Nigeria is that we have very qualified people. We have people who are brilliant. We have people who are ready to do the job. We should ensure that we do not allow other sentiments to impede that progress. That is all I'm saying. So we can do it as a nation. We can make it. as a, For me as a person, I do not and I will not give up on Nigeria. Those who are partition. They read politics, they interpret everything. In fact, those who don't like the face of the president cannot see anything positive in what he does. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, that's who we are as a people. And those who love the president cannot see any flaw. Both sides are wrong. Extreme. We should all balance things up, comment where you can see commendable things happening for the sake of the nation. And then we should when you even condemn or you criticize, provide a solution. Tell us what they should do. So Instead of having here, those uh, scary headlines, not to put the headline, what solution have they suggested? So if they hearing, put the same editor in the same position, it will be jive. <laughs> no, you yes. can't totally conclude. You can't conclude. You oh. don't know his capacity. We've seen it. <laughs> We've seen it. We, you don't know We've his capacity. It. You know, Minister of Information, in those right. days, Military time, Quickly. especially. Yeah. They put That's seizing right. journalists. Mm -hmm. We expect those media men mm -hmm. to be able to sit down in front of the media, tell the nation the truth. But they don't. All right. And they can't. All right. You know, very quickly, yeah, let's talk about your own perspective of alternative uh, you know, energy sources to actually put an end to this uh, over-reliance on uh, the national grid. Uh, what do you have to say as regards that? Uh, even after the hearing... Uh, how sure are we about uh, implementation? And this may not come anytime soon. So possibly we should be looking into a different alternative in that sense. Well, that is true. Um, it is good for us to have what I will call a mixed grid. Okay. Production of electricity should not be limited to water, which is hydro, mm. or gas, which is thermal. Mm. Uh, we use mainly thermal plants, which is gas-fired power plants. Mm. We don't have gas issues now, I want to believe. Because at some point, it was gas that was the problem, but we seem to have gas some Gas is temper. still an issue, but we are, we, are, we are better now than we were before. One of the issues is also that you site a power plant at a location where you cannot easily Access. pipe gas to get there. You don't put a car in a village, a brand new car, you just use a helicopter, you drop that car inside a village where there's no road. It's a brand new car. How do you expect that car to get petrol or diesel? So now, um, I think, like I said earlier, we're doing better now than before. All, all of us, generation, transmission, distribution, the regulators, even the government. But in terms of alternative energy, if you look at Nigeria, there's a point between Kano and Jigawa that is the hottest spot in Nigeria. In other country, like in the U.S., if you go to Indianapolis, as you come out of the Indiana airport, you see a massive solar plant oh. that powers the airport and the, all the 
uh, surrounding our town. Now, you should, we expect that areas like Kano, some areas that in the north, we should by now have major, major solar projects. Yeah. Not just those small, small mini grids. So that's the thing that we should do. Right. But they are expensive. We have to and do. people too need to know that when you want this thing, it is also going to be expensive to pay for them. All right. We'll leave the conversation there. There's also the aspect of decentralizing the grid and all of it. But we do not have time. Thank you so much, MDCEO of uh, the Association of Nigerian Electricity Distributors and official spokesman for all distribution companies, Sunday Odoton. Thank, Thank you, Thank you for your time. Thank you. All right. Still to come, Nigeria is facing a serious issue as former President Olusha Gwon Basanja highlights the alarming number of out-of-school children. Join us for this conversation after the break.